Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, 2 Kings chapter 24, and today's title is The End is Coming. The End is Coming. And as we've been talking about before, is this is the end of the second part of what used to be one book called 2 Kings, and it's going to end with today and tomorrow's chapter. And it is, it's a sad ending. It's, not, it's not, not happy. But at the same time, there's still something amazing about this ending. We're getting into that in just a moment. But as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. Leave us a five-star review on the podcast and then gather with us at the Bible Breakdown Discussion at the Facebook group, Bible Breakdown Discussion. And it is amazing. The more we dig, the more we find. I love those devotions they're doing every day. And it is absolutely an honor to be building this community with you as we are going through God's Word one chapter at a time. If you have your Bibles, you want to open up with me to the very depressing <laughs> 2 Kings chapter 24. This reminds me of a movie I watched one time called the third movie in The Lord of the Rings called The Return of the King. I don't know if you ever watched this movie before, but when I watched it back when it first came out, I had an opportunity to go to, it was opening night at this particular theater, and I was so excited. I've been watching the previews. I was just obsessed with seeing the end of this movie, and I was so excited. And I was watching this movie, and as I was watching it, there was this big climactic moment, and it was just exciting, and it was great. And then the, the lights go down, and then the screen comes back up again. There's, there's another ending. So we start going again, and then the lights go down, and then they go back up again. It's happened, I forget, it's like three or four times until the last time I was like, is this it? Is, 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 it, is it over? You know, and this was before they used to have like post credit scenes, that kind of stuff. I wasn't sure if it was over or not. And it was kind of cool because at one point it was like it was done, it was over. Also a little bit of excitement of, is there a little bit more? Because it was just an exciting thing, right? Well, today, in today's chapter, if you've been with us, you realize that First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings were written, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to answer the question for the nation of Israel, how do we get into this mess? Because as we know, Israel has already failed. They've already been conquered by Assyria. Well, as we're going to read today and tomorrow, that now it's Judah's turn, because they've turned away from God so many times, they're going to be conquered by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. And as they are taken into captivity, and they, they go to captivity for 70 years, the question becomes, how do we get in this mess? I thought God was for us. I thought God was with us. And what the Holy Spirit is saying to us through First and Second Samuel, now First and Second Kings, who originally were two books, Samuel and Kings, they're telling the story of how we got into this situation, which is, we did this over and over again. God said, please follow me. Please serve me. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Please put that down. Please, you know, all this stuff. And they just continually do not do it. And so what we're going to see is a season of endings that are necessary. But there's something beautiful about this that we're going to read together as we watch the inevitable happen. God told him it was going to happen, and here we go. So if you're ready, get your Bible with me. 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 1 says this. During Jehoiakim's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded the land of Judah, and Jehoiakim surrendered and paid him tribute for three years, but then rebelled. Then the Lord sent bands of Babylonians, Armeans, Moabites, and Ammonite raiders against Judah to destroy it, just as the Lord had promised through his prophets. These disasters happened to Judah because of the Lord's command. He had decided to banish Judah from his presence because of the many sins of Manasseh who had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord would not forgive this. The rest of the events in Jehoiakim's reign and all of his deeds were recorded in the history of the book of the kings of Judah. When Jehoiakim died, his son Jehoiakim became the next king. The king of Egypt did not venture out of his country after that, for the king of Babylon captured the entire area formerly claimed by Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother was Nehushta, the daughter of Enthalon from Jerusalem. Jehoiakim did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father had done. During Jehoiakim's reign, the officers of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came up against Jerusalem and besieged it. Nebuchadnezzar himself arrived at the city during the siege. The king Jehoiakim, along with the queen mother, his advisors, his commanders, and his officers surrendered to the Babylonians. In the eighth year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, he took Jehoiakim prisoner. As the Lord had said beforehand, 
Nebuchadnezzar carried away all of the treasures from the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He stripped away all the gold objects that King Solomon of Israel had placed in the temple. King Nebuchadnezzar took all of Jerusalem captive, including all the commanders and the best of the soldiers, craftsmen, and artisans, 10,000 in all. Only the poorest people were left in the land. Nebuchadnezzar led King Jehoiakim away as, the, as captive to Babylon, along with the queen mother, his wives and officials, and all of Jerusalem's elite. He also exiled 7,000 of the best troops and 1,000 craftsmen and artisans, all of whom were strong and fit for war. Then the king of Babylon installed Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, as the next king, and he changed Mataniah's name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother was Hamital, the daughter of Jeremiah from Libna. But Zedekiah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Jehoiakim had done. These things happened because the Lord's anger against the people of Jerusalem and Judah, or because the king, wait, excuse me, let me say that verse again. These things happened because of the Lord's anger against the people of Jerusalem and Judah until he had finally banished them from his presence and sent them into exile. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So, as we can see, the end is coming. God is going to do what he's going to do. But what I want you to see is, as we're going to read, we read it today, and as we're going to read tomorrow, even with this, God still doesn't give up on his people. It, it said, you're going to read this, and you saw it today, that even though these things were happening and God led these people over here and God leads people over here, he didn't slaughter them. They may have had to go into uncomfortable situations. There were all these people, they were led away, but they weren't destroyed. And can I tell you, I've seen that happen in my life. I've seen that happen in the lives of others. That yes, bad days come. Can I say this to you? If you consider me to be your pastor, I want to say this to you. In this life, you will have trouble. Suffering's a thing. It, it, it just is. I, I wish it wasn't, but it is. Jesus suffered. If Jesus suffered, how dare we ever think we're not going to suffer? H who do we think we are to think we're not going to have bad times? It's going to happen. Well, pastor, we should be more positive. Okay, I'm positive bad times will come. But here's the thing. God never leaves us. There's so many different reasons why bad things come. Bad things will come because of mistakes that we have made. And we have to pay the price, the just penalty for our sins. Our sins are forgiven, but sometimes the effects of our sin remain. And we have to pay the price. Sometimes we don't do anything bad. It's just we live in a fallen world, and we trust in the end that even in the bad things, God is able to get glory, and he's able to do good things. But here's the thing. Suffering will happen. As a Christ follower, suffering will happen. The Bible says that Job went through all kinds of bad things. And we know, because we read the story, that at the very beginning of Job, it says that it was because God had so much faith in Job, he allowed the enemy to afflict Job for a season. But guess what? The Bible never says that God told Job that. So he's sitting there going, God, why am I doing all this suffering? The Bible never says he found out on this side of eternity. There was a time when Paul, like if anybody needed some help, Paul did. The Bible said that he had an ailment, an issue. He called it a thorn in his flesh. And he said, the Bible said three times he prayed for God to deliver him from that thorn. And God said, no, but my grace will be sufficient. So there are times where we will go through difficult times. But here's the thing. God never leaves us. God never forsakes us. Whether it's a, a, a valley of our own making, whether it's a valley that God allows us to walk through for sometimes reasons he only knows, God never leaves us. So if God will never leave us, that means he has purpose for us in that place. Because the Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. Why? Because God, he walks close beside me. And I want to say that to somebody today, that maybe you're going through a difficult valley. You're going through a difficult time. Let's say for another conversation, why? Maybe, who knows? But let's not go there right now. Instead, does it matter? You know what I mean? Right now, while you're experiencing that pain, right now while you're experiencing that loneliness, 
that depression, that fear, that anguish, that anxiety. We could talk about later why. Let's just talk about the fact you feel it. It does not necessarily mean that you've done anything wrong. It might, but it might not. What does matter is that God hasn't left you. God is as close as you can whisper Jesus. He's with you even in this moment. So even when the end comes, the end of a relationship, the end of a job, the end of this, the end of that, things we would never hope for, even when those bad days come, God never leaves. God's with you even in this moment right now. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that right now, everybody listening to this podcast or watching this video, that you, Holy Spirit, will invade this moment. Lord, there are some people that may be listening to this. They're going through the deepest, darkest valley of their life. They need to be reminded of your presence. God, we know because we believe your word that you feel all of the universe. You stand outside of space and time, but yet you also encapsulate all that we can ask, think, or imagine. You are in all dimensions simultaneously. You are everywhere. You're in this moment right now. I pray that you will reveal yourself to us a little bit more. We'll experience your presence a little bit more. And we'll remember, there is no valley too deep. There is no mountain too high that you are not with us right now. Let us experience your presence in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I hope for you that you will experience what happened in 2 Kings chapter 6. The Bible said that there was a moment when the prophet Elisha and his young man were being surrounded by an enemy. And the Bible says this, Elisha said, Do not be afraid, for there are more on our side than on theirs. And then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. And the Bible said that the Lord opened this young man's eyes, and around that small enemy was a vast army of angels. My prayer is the Lord will open your eyes today for you to be able to see that there are more for you than there are against you. And God is with you more than you can imagine. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for the climax of 2 Kings, 2 Kings 25.